What's up, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here, finally talking about the symbiotes. Uh, again, we know not all of them are farmable. Doesn't matter. Let's talk about the team. So, uh, what do we know about the symbiotes? They're awesome. They're awesome in a lot of things. Y'all fanboy hard or fangirl hard for them. I fanboy hard for them. Uh, great. We're not even going to waste any time on this. Let's watch them whoop some random team <laughs> uh, in Blitz. And we'll go straight into the availability of what we do know. And maybe some speculation on the availability of what we don't know uh, about this team. That sounds about right. So, symbiote availability. Symbiote Spider-Man, milestone orbs, or $70. That is it. That is his availability. It's not going to get better. Don't ask. It's just going to suck. So you're going to have to buy him or just wait and get lucky. Those are your only two ways to get symbiote Spider-Man from now on. Carnage, War Store, not a high priority, but the second you unlock symbiote Spider-Man, he becomes one. Venom, node farmable character, I believe. Cosmic, but... Like cosmic 1-3 or something. I don't know. He's super easy to access. Uh, <laughs> super easy. Uh, and also there's like a $4 offer the day you start the game that you probably picked up because Venom is dope. Uh, Scream and Anti-Venom currently unfarmable. Uh, likely to see them farmable at some point in the next few months. So I'd say uh, maybe early March or so of 2021 we'll get a farmable Scream and Anti-Venom. Uh, no... They are not going to be premium orb exclusive. Neither of them are good enough to be premium orb exclusive. You are wrong if you think they are good enough to be premium orb exclusive. Um, Scream, most likely going to be like some kind of raid or blitz store character. Um, Anti-Venom, probably going to be a harder to come by version. Maybe an end game character farm or... Uh, you know, like one of those nodes that come out that are yet to be level 70 to 75 to do. Uh, or he'll be raid slash war store just because. Ah, it's unlikely he'll be war store now that I think about it because you just wouldn't get carnage. You would split farm and it wouldn't make too much of a difference. Raid store makes the most sense for him. Um, but then again, there's always the option that they do give him some kind of weird exclusivity. Uh, like the Blitz Orb specialty kind of thing. By the time it happens that said we don't know um so now let's talk about the team itself and determine where we're going to use them so usability of the symbiotes almost as much as the black order almost as much as the black order and in some places a little bit better than the black order and in some places significantly worse than the black order they're kind of like the yin and the yang the black order are really really good at certain things and absolutely ter uh, not terrible but usable in others symbiotes are the exact reverse so for arena um i'm gonna say this as a blanket statement because your arena is not the same as the arena right in your arena uh you might be playing the game for three months and the number one guy has a maxed out as guardians team or you might be playing the game for seven months and someone has a stonked out um symbiotes team right the symbiotes are not an arena defense team. The fact that your symbiotes are winning on arena defense tells me more about your arena shard than it does about the symbiotes team. The symbiotes themselves are incredibly easy to pick apart. Their AI is incredibly stupid. Uh, they don't always do the thing that they're supposed to do. As a matter of fact, they will waste abilities on things that don't matter or make sense. Uh, that there is a period of time in which your full version of the team will do well congratulations you've now understood how the linear passage of time makes a difference in that you having a strong team before other people have a strong team will make you stronger that's the entire concept of spending money in the game and why it works that said this team will not is not the answer to arena uh i'm not even talking about black order you can pick this team apart with the asgardians if you know what you're doing you will, on offense, be a defensive symbiote team with the Asgardians. Because they're not all hitting Greg. It's a fact. Um, so they're not a great defense team. As for an offense team, again, symbiote Spider-Man is really good. Uh, Venom can be really good. But Arena is more about raw power than about speed. So 
it's possible that your team can win, but it will only ever be temporary. Because right now, in the alliance, in the, you know, the part of the arena that I'm in, um, nobody would pass anything with symbiotes. You know, we're talking about everybody who has access to all of the characters in the game. Symbiotes don't even make a dent. They're not a threat. Whether they're useful to you now, it just means that your arena has not reached the point. So they're not good in arena on either side. Um, it is what it is. As for war, um, they're a decent offense team because there are certain things they can and can they they can do easily. There are a couple things they can't do, but they're a really good offense team. Same rules apply for defense, though. They are too easy to pick apart, and in general, anti venom dies, carnage dies, team loses. If you kill anti venom and then carnage, the it, the fight's over. They that they, they cannot win. So you just have to bring in a team that's capable of doing that. Even if your first attack into the team is kill Carnage, kill Anti-Venom, and then someone else comes in, the cleanup's going to be a thousand times easier. They they don't gain the value that they're supposed to gain outside of uh, raids in Dark Dimension. Because of that, they lose a lot of their strength in those game modes. So they're not great. They're good offense team in war, but like whatever. Any team's a good offense team in war. But that's where you're going to use them, right? Uh, and then as for Arena, they're okay. And then we talk about the game modes that matter for them. And it's really it's all because of Symbiote Spider-Man. We talk about Raid, right? Um, you, This is my team. And uh, with the exception of mini boss nodes. Not all of them, but some mini boss nodes. This team can auto every U7.5 node. Period. This version of this team. Probably there's versions that are weaker that, that can do it. But I'm telling you now, this team, any node that it any node that isn't a, a boss node, this team can auto. Even at the end. This team. That's good enough. <laughs> like I said auto, in case you guys weren't hearing me. If I actually try i could probably beat most nodes with this team that's it i they're that's what they are that's it right Ra raids them auto u7.5 hardest raid in the game autoing 90 percent of the nodes you're going to come in contact with 85 percent of the nodes I, seal of approval done like what else do i have to say dark dimension you see the order of this team's power, starting with Sumi at Spider-Man and moving all the way to Scream? That's your priority order for Dark Dimension. Dark Dimension 2, Dark Dimension 3, Dark Dimension 8, Dark Dimension 76, Dark Dimension Symbiotes, Dark Dimension Dark Symbiotes 2, Electric Boogaloo, whatever you want to call it, this is the upgrade order. But Tony, Anti-Venom, f*** you, I don't care. You're wrong. This is the order. Why? Because everybody who followed this order chuckled. Some people were able to do anti-venom instead of regular venom. Some people are born rich. Some people do whatever they want. This is the correct order. You start with Symbiote Spider-Man. You move to Carnage. You get Venom. You add anti-venom. Scream is a hit or miss. You don't even need her. Every time you add someone to this team in this order, your clear time is cut in, like by 66 percent symbiote spider-man might clear all of dark dimension <laughs> on his own in like a month all, all of the last four nodes anyway because the last node is going to be a pain symbiote spider-man and carnage will do it in like a week and a half maybe assuming you're not using any cores symbiote spider-man carnage and venom will do it in four days and that's again assuming you're not doing any cores and that you're clearing the first two and a half to three nodes just on their own. Anti-Venom, you'll do the entire last four nodes in, in the run that you're starting. Uh, and if you add Scream to there, you'll be done before you start. This team absolutely obliterates the Dark Dimension nodes that they can be used in. Um, so, yeah. If you uh, live in Happy Magic Christmas Land and can six-star this entire team, use them for Dark Dimension 1. Uh, if you got Symbiote Spider-Man, like I did on my free-to-play account, uh, I used Symbiote Spider-Man and Carnage for Dark Dimension 2. Worked great. No notes. But Tony, there's a Deadpool note. I crushed it. 
Carnage has a special that removes debuffs and does damage. Crushed that node. Giggled about it. It was hilarious. Symbiote's team, absolutely phenomenal in Dark Dimension. Absolutely phenomenal uh, in raids. They are the probably the best raid team in the game. Uh, as far as put them together and you don't have to do anything, just put them together and go. Uh, you don't have to think, you don't have to measure, you don't have to determine how characters interact with each other. Just this team works well because they heal each other to full uh, every time any one of them takes a turn. That's that's it. That's why they're so good. I There's no other usability. Uh, individual values are separate, like Symbiote, Spider-Man, Anti-Venom, Carnage. All have value in, uh, in Venom. They all have value in PvP. None of that matters. Uh, so now let's talk about Tier 4s. Uh, I'm going to give you a disclaimer. I have more Tier 4s in this team than they need. Uh, I do that because I want this team to be really, 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 really good. And because, obviously, I have low stars on these guys right here. Uh, actual stars. Uh, so uh, I needed to make up for the giant power difference between 100k three guys and, you know, 40k small guys. Starting with Scream. Symbiotic Attachment, 5% healing. Uh, this is, I like this ability because it allows them to be really good in war. Because it allows them to, like, farm Gregs and everything. Uh, that said, she doesn't have a lot of health so that, you know, going to 10% is relevant. But not as much as it could be. So this is not a tier 4 that's necessary. But it's a good uh, specific answer tier 4. If you're going to use this team to try to counter certain fights in war. Don't need it really for pe uh, for raids. Because they're already healing to full. But who knows. Might help a little bit. She's also dead usually in raids. Hair trigger. Uh, I think hair trigger is a pretty decent one. Small increase to damage. It's 50% uh, to primary and secondary. So it goes from 250 to 300. Uh, apply slow for 2 turns. Uh, the slow for 2 turns is completely vanity you really don't have to worry about it symbiote spider-man is probably going to slow them for two turns the overlaps aren't great on this uh that said uh, you can who cares like is it worth it no not it's not worth what it costs was it 280 it's not worth it but you like the symbiotes you're gonna do it anyway you know like the good advice will not stop you from making a bad decision if you want to make it so uh, I, like, like I just did. So you can. It's not necessary, but it, it helps. Uh, splitting hairs, I think, is the most important one. Uh, increases damage to primary and secondary by, by 40%, and, uh, clear two positive effects on all targets. That is pretty much where you need, but the chain and clear two positive effects is, is, it's relevant. Like, this is where you need to, to move into. The fact that it can uh, chain to stealth targets is huge. Counterattack breaking it kind of sucks, but... Absolutely worthwhile investment. She's just ripping buffs off people as she does it. Uh, and that's kind of important for everywhere you're going to use the symbiotes, including raids and Dark Dimension. And then, as of symbiote swipes... Uh, small increase in damage. The positive effect doesn't change. Chain to two adjacents uh, does the same thing, but the guaranteed apply bleed to the uh, to the uh, you know the additional targets kind of relevant, especially because it's the debuff. So technically, it heals her for thirty per for three percent because of symbiote Spider Man. Um, this attack can set the fact that she can hit stealth targets is actually kind of fun and w really where a lot of her skill comes in that nobody talks about. Uh, she kind of ignores stealth targets, and that's a big deal. Uh, so that's it. I, I think that maybe two, these two right here are okay. These two right here are total vanity. Only invest in them if you really like to see your symbiote strong. Um, as for ISOs, damage, skirmisher, doesn't really matter. Like, she has no health, but damage could help, so striker's pretty good. Uh, she hasn't crit. I've seen some people use raider on her. I'm not a huge fan of raider, but you can. Um, I don't think she's critting that much, and even then, she's not, like, boosted crit damage or anything. You know, so. I like Striker on her. Or Skirmisher. Uh, Anti-Venom, Hard Striker. Uh, no questions asked, not even having this conversation. Uh, Wretched Healer, on turn, clear one negative effect. Okay, I'm gonna read this really slowly. First of all, you're tier 4 this, not even justifying it. Just tier 4 it. Uh, clear one negative effect 
from the most injured ally on the team. Doesn't matter who it is. Doesn't matter if it's a symbiote. Just they get a, a deep, like one debuff that's on them, gone. The way this works, check the most injured ally. If they have a negative effect, do this. If not, check the next most injured ally. If they have a negative effect, do this. That's how this actually works. If that ally is a symbiote, so on the full symbiote team, all other symbiote allies get one negative effect removed. That's just what happens every time on turn. That's just what he does. That's his life. Uh, when this character drops to 50% max health, gain evade. This ability on the symbiotes is incredibly important, almost mandatory. You really want to just start ripping off debuffs on everybody all the time whenever you can. Uh, Deadly Cure, totally not necessary to upgrade. Uh, gain the opposite of all negative effects. You think that sounds awesome. It very often doesn't matter because it says excluding bleed and your symbiotes tend to only put bleed stacks on. So like occasionally it's like gain a, you know, gain a defense up or, or something. Uh, gain, a, gain an immunity, you know, like based on who Scream hit. So it's not amazing. The problem is very infrequently is the target you chew, you want to hit with this also the target you need to hit with this, if that makes sense. Because this is a big damage attack, 300% damage. So you want to kill somebody, but they don't have the right debuffs? Uh, unfortunate. This attack kind of looks better on paper than it does in practice, but it's still okay. Uh, the damage increase from the tier 4 is 50%. The regeneration goes from 1 to 2, and it spreads all positive effects um to symbiotes as opposed to whatever the number was before i think it was two uh it spreads two random positive effects on self to non-symbiote allies then spread all positive effects on self to symbiote allies as opposed to whatever two or three i don't remember the exact number it was before um again i know you want to be like i want to spread all the positive effects no you don't it'll be fine you'll be fine you don't need to this attack doesn't happen often enough that it's a big deal. You don't need a tier for this. Um, antiseptic. Uh, clear heal block on all allies. Apply immunity to all allies. Uh, heal allies for plus five uh, with the tier four. This, I think that's supposed to say of, not O. Oh. This uh, character's max health. Revive a dead symbiote ally with 50% base health. If there are no symbiote allies to revive, gain three ability energy. Basically, if everyone's still alive, you know, this costs six. Get yourself halfway to rebuilding it, kind of. Big deal. It's one of the reasons why this team works so well on auto. Um, the increase from 30 to 60 and that small increase of health um, for the revive is the reason why you want to tier 4 this. Uh, basically, this says revive Scream. If Scream's not dead, wait a little bit and then revive her next time. Uh, so good luck with that. <laughs> no worries there. Deathclaw, absolutely amazing animation, absolutely amazing ability. Probably worth tier 4 uh, Not a high priority, but still good. Attack primary target for 250 damage. Apply bleed. The opposite of two random positive effects in this character to primary target. It's a lot of words. And then, stab your friend with health. This would... I don't know why it doesn't say that. It should just say, stab your, your ally with health. Heal the most injured non-summoned ally for 10% of this character's max health. And clear heal block. Again, wording. Weird. Why are we healing, then clearing? Why not clear the heal block and then heal? But whatever. This attack can't be dodged. The increase is the uh, copy of multiple positive effects. Um, you know, the, you know, you, the opposite of two random positive effects on him. Uh, and the slight increase in damage. This is a great ability. This ability is hilarious. And it works exactly the way you want it to. And you can hit anybody with it and feel good about it. So, it's pretty reasonable. Um, that's for Anti-Venom. Venom, uh, to be fair... None of his tier 4s are necessary at all. But they're fun. Symbiosis, uh, the only upgrade you get, instead of healing for 10%, it's healing for 15, not 25, 15. That extra 5% doesn't matter because the team is so heal-driven anyway that it's okay. Um, the focus and everything that comes from just being on this is... It is what it is. It's its own thing. Um... The, the health being greater than 95%, again, was important to have his heal before. Now, with the symbiotes, totally not. Don't need to tier for this. Corruption, attack primary target for 80 or 180%, and adjacent targets for 140. Blah, 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 blah. This will not spread stuff. Okay. So, slight increase in damage, but the tier 4 ability will uh, alter 
the level of bleed stacks that are presented. It works this way for him, but not every character. I don't want to go into detail. I don't care if you think it's proven right or wrong. I don't want anyone's opinion on this. It's worthwhile tier 4 if you really just like to see high bleed stack damage. Other than that, don't worry about it. Uh, same with Violate. Uh, it increases the base damage by a ton. It adds uh, more bleed stacks, another wave of bleed stacks to a character. Uh, where is this going to be useful, Tony? This is useful in Dark Dimension and Raids. Uh, especially if you're using a character like Hella with them uh, in for either. Because then this two, you know, this three giant bleed stack for two turns that gets spread to everybody is going to guarantee that they're viciously debuffed for a really long time. Uh, so this ability just on its own is pure damage, but if you're starting to make mishmash teams with the symbiotes, this will help a lot. Like, I use um, the base three symbiotes with Hela and um, Emma a lot, and they seem to be doing just fine, you know? Uh, other than that, the ability block is kind of self-mandatory, so you don't have to tier for this. I just like the big damage that this does, because sometimes... It's almost a guarantee that, like, a character in, like, low yellow, high red health, he does it to them, they're gonna die. Either from the attack or from the, the three bleeds that hit him later. Uh, Maul is his greatest ability. Uh, attack primary target for 230% damage. Apply bleed for one turn. Flip two positive effects and negative effects. It, the damage increase is so minute, but the bleed increase is relevant. Uh, and, of course, Striker, so that he does it again. Venom loves to, to just flip debuffs and murder people huge love him absolutely great go venom uh carnage frenzied fury uh again this is for the symbiotes this is not a necessary tier four this is the necessary tier four for the symbiote team extra 10 percent speed bar is the different is literally a third of difference you know a third of a turn meter uh because by the time you would normally ha like you would have to it's 50 percent you know, a 50% increase, or five times, you'd have to kill something to gain what the equivalent of one turn meter is. This makes it a total of three times. Yeah. Like, it's huge. It's a huge upgrade for that team. Outside of that team, or just for Symbiote Sp like Spider-Man, it's okay. Uh, but if you don't have at least Symbiote Spider-Man, this upgrade is completely useless. Don't even bother with it. But with the team, again, what we're talking about, great. Absolute Carnage, nope. It's It's... It makes the damage number seem super de duper big. And it doesn't matter at all. At all. If you want to see a big damage number, click the button. The difference between infinite damage and slightly more infinite damage is nigh infinite. So do whatever you want. Uh, slaughter. Tr try it however you want. This attack is never going to kill everybody. But going... Uh, I know it sounds crazy. Uh, the 70% damage increase to the base attack is worthless. The 70% damage increase to the adjacent characters is actually awesome. So feel free to upgrade this in like raids. But that's it. Only for raids. Uh, I haven't needed it because I rarely use that ability anyway. But if you do want to use this ability to like AoE clear stuff down. Or as like the oh shit I need to heal right now button. Uh, if you're Carnage and he happens to be really low for some reason. This will do it. Um, as for Cleave. People like this one so it is a good one because you're using this ability more than anyone else um so this is more of a upgrade out of boredom than necessity like well if i'm going to use this attack all the time might as well be the strongest <laughs> and yeah that's technically true uh making it go from 230 to 280 uh increasing the amount of damage for the secondary target from 190 to 240 yeah like that's totally relevant and i support it but like i never needed to do it it's not like characters are left up anyway. Again, keep in mind, 7.5, my team as is, autos every non-boss node. Would they be able to auto the boss nodes with this? Probably not. But I also don't care, because those are just the nodes I have to care about. So, uh, that's it. Symbiote Spider-Man, ha ha ha, do whatever you want. Truly perfect host is really the only one that makes a difference. Uh, it's just a 20% max health for self, hero, spider-verse, and symbiote allies. Again, this is clearly on his team. I cannot stress that enough. If you're just putting tier 4s in characters because you like seeing big numbers, congratulations, I'm happy for you. But, uh, this is completely useless to him outside of his team. He, he doesn't need that much extra health. 
Um, on his team, though, absolutely amazing. It's like literally a, they get 100% total health increase. Like crazy. 20 times 50. I know it doesn't work that way. Shut up. Uh, web slam. Slight increase to damage. Uh, apply slow to all targets for two turns. You know, like, this is just a big, dumb damage attack that hits everybody. So, like, absolutely worthwhile uh, upgrade. It is a big, dumb damage attack that hits everybody. Like, can't be avoided. Can't be blocked. Yes. This is kind of a no-brainer upgrade. Is it necessary? No. Is it awesome? Yes. Spider Slingshot. Uh, kind of the same conversation. Uh, slight increase in damage, but it does uh, increase the duration of all effects. And always apply bleed to each target. <sighs> On the team, it's a lot of heals. Outside of it, not great. Uh, the increase in damage is from 260 to 300. I found... I, I can't say for certain whether or not it was a worthwhile investment. Um, like, I, I didn't, you know, notice if it sucked before I did this investment. Symbiote Spider-Man was just always a great character when I used him, so I don't think it's necessary. Um, I don't regret it either, if that makes sense, but I don't think it's necessary. Symbiote Swinger... Uh, again, you're going to hear a lot of misinformation about how it doesn't work. No, it works, and it's still worthwhile. It just does, it's just not as awesome as people necessarily thought. So, the, the primary target always gets defense down for two turns, no matter what, right? It's the, uh, secondary targets getting defense down for two turns, uh, that are relevant. So, the good news is, the first thing he hits after this is also getting two turns of defense down. The bad news is, if he bounces back and doesn't hit a new target, that guy's not getting four turns of defense down, but he is getting hit now that he has defense down. So, is it worth it? Yes, it's probably the single strongest upgrade he gets uh, because he's now spreading more defense down to people, but it's unreliable. So, you don't have to upgrade this ability... But it is probably the best first one because it's cheap and you start really feeling what it's like to get defense down on characters with Symbiote Spider-Man as you're building up the rest of the team. Uh, so that's it for the Symbiote order. Again, ISO 8s, Raider, Healer, and this could be Skirmisher. I just like Healer. This could be Skirmisher. Uh, I like Healer because I use Carnage outside of this team and he has a shit ton of health and he goes really fast. So I just like him throwing like... 20k heals on the weakest person on my team sometimes. Uh, Venom and Anti-Venom. No question striker. Like, period. Don't worry about anything else. And then uh, Scream, I have Red Skirmisher. Striker's totally reasonable. Raider is questionably reasonable. I don't think she's survived long enough, but like that's pretty much okay. Uh, one thing I do want to say last before I give this team a rating. Uh, no, don't put healer on all of them. Don't do it. Because they're already healing all their full health. If you're doing a fight where they need to be max healer, you shouldn't be doing that fight. Like, th that's not a fight you should be doing. Um, if you have, if you're spending money, do whatever you want, I don't care. But in general, it's kind of a waste to bring this team to healer. Um, now we're talking about rating, S team. This is literally, this team is the yin to the yang that is uh, the Black Order. If you have a really strong Black Order and a really strong Symbiotes team, you will be pretty set for a lot of the game, if that makes sense. You'll have Arena, Crushed, you'll have... War is hard to, to quantify, but in both cases, that would help you be better at War. Uh, better at War. Keep, keep in mind, War is about how many characters you have, not how good your characters you do have are. I think... The symbiotes are slightly more useful because of how important it is to push for raids value. But I also think that the amount of people who believe that the symbiotes are necessary for content in this game, I think that number is way too high. I don't think you need the symbiotes for Dark Dimension, anything. Uh, but they're awesome at it. 
I think you can absolutely beat the city nodes without the symbiotes. I just think it's like the same way as beating basically any game mode without the best possible characters for them. The fact that they're the best doesn't mean they're necessary. It just means they're the best. The best option for Dark Dimension, the best option for raids, the best option is still probably going to be the symbiotes, but that doesn't mean that they're the only option. That's what the word option is for. I think this is an S team. I think they are uh, worth investment. I think that there is a, a stop point. I think you need to know where they're good and where they're bad. I think that if you fall into the same trap that millions of defenders and aim starters fell into, which is, but look at how strong my defenders are that can't do anything. You're going to uh, regret sooner than later, wink, wink, how much you've placed into the current version of the Symbiotes team. Wink, wink, considering things that wink, nudge, might be stroke coming out uh, in the next few months. That said, they will be good now. So if you don't care about what how good a team is next month, but care really, really greatly about how good they are this week, best all into them. They are a phenomenal team. I am enjoying them. Again, last time I'm going to say it, U7.5, this team, change nothing. Uh, all of the characters, auto, all non-boss notes. So if you can get your team to this strong, congratulations, you've conquered 90% of U7.5. And probably weaker versions of this team can do as good in weaker versions of U7. So hopefully that's all the information. Comment below. Let me know uh, where the symbiotes touched you uh, in your heart. Uh, how important it is uh, for you to invest in the symbiotes. And why you're wrong about Anti-Venom being uh, as good as you think he is. He's great. And that's the end of that conversation. Uh, so have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli. And I'll catch you later.